Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto channel. Wishing you a happy and healthy start to this nice Thursday morning that we got going on right now. And Bitcoin is once again doing the dance of the dance of displeasure, the dance of no movement at all, basically since we last spoke. So I wanted to go over the medium and higher term time frame setups that we have staring us in the face right now, that they are actually uh, very much viable. And then more importantly, what to essentially expect. Um, Maybe not uh, Maybe not this week, but probably next week. Anyways, uh, with that in mind, I did want to make a note that the HPDR indicator is now available on the Crown Chain application. And then also, uh, Bybit has officially um, fully integrated, actually, their decentralized exchange onto Bybit itself. So you can find that in the link in the description below, but basically it's just all in one place now. So if you're looking for, you know, some some something or somewhere to trade without, like, having to put your coins on exchange and trust that exchange, well, a decentralized exchange exchange uh, like Apex on Bybit um, might be might be viable for you. All right, sweet. So let's just jump right in into it. Let's uh, start off over here with the HPDR indicator. I really like starting off this one because and give us some insight and some buys and some more importantly statistics as to what essentially is more wise to be looking for. And in this case, we actually did confirm the setup coming in from yesterday's video, which was this, a four hour closure below the bottom side of the blue range, which essentially is the 50% um, uh, percent of return range. And that was coupled with one closure, I believe after our video or right around here, where volatility was declining. So we had a a decline in volatility, volatility contraction, plus a close below the bottom side of the 50% returns range. Well, what essentially is that setting up for? More than likely a bounce, as that is the setup that we can go and back test over here. And I realized that not all of this is going to be showing because it's, well, it's rather fucking large. Um, this is my back testing data for the four hour time frame, just so you know. Um, and by the way, if you do have the HPDR indicator, you can actually see all of this for all the different time frames in the uh, in the in the video in the video section, you know, where you would actually find such things. Anyways, um, in this case, out of 50 iterations, 39 were winners uh, looking for essentially a bounce based off the setup that we just spoke about, um, or 78%, which is I would say rather high. That then coupled with the average percent gain, um, and also looking at the first standard deviation, I thought was very very interesting right here. So, in this case, the average gain was about three and three quarters percent first standard deviation, which is probably more wise to be looking at on the bottom end, just because we're you know we're experiencing very low volatility times right now. Would give us a range between about one uh, one eighty all the way up to almost six percent. So you know rather large right there. Obviously, we have seen some massive outliers as well in the past, but. Ultimately, this would essentially give a bias for a bounce, a bit of a trap action that we have here um, to the upside uh, as much as, you know, may, maybe as much as like 5%. I think that, that would be a little bit too aggressive for myself. Um, probably it, probably more more along the lines of 180 to, to 2%, which guess what? If we were to actually measure this out, when in doubt, measure it out, as they say, that would give us... Um, yeah, that would that would basically put Bitcoin back around seventeen one fifty. Uh, sorry, about seventeen thousand one hundred on the lower end, and on you know if we were to go for like the full average, that would put Bitcoin basically at around seventeen five or so. So keep those numbers in mind because that, we're going to come back to that in a bit here. But ultimately, whenever we're talking about statistics, we're not talking about certainty. So at the end of the day, what essentially would invalidate this? What essentially would not just invalidate this, but validate? Uh, massively new lows on this current Dumpola party, or <laughs> like wh what we have left of this Dumpola party. Well, that would be, again, with the same criteria as before. Need to see a four hour closure below the medium term time frame range pivot, which is 16,700 or 16650 uh depending upon your exchange um obviously 16650 is going to be a little bit more a little bit more uh conservative in this estimate but ultimately below there then yes we can very likely look for a full return back down to extreme lows on uh, 16000 bucks maybe even maybe even closer to 15 and a half thousand bucks um you know over that time frame but here's the thing we can actually forecast not necessarily forecast but get an average of what we expect based upon that signal to take like how, how how many hours and in this case i found on average it was about 41 and a half hours to meet that next sort of uh, precipice in this case the upside uh, you know the the totality of that upside move so that would be what like close to two days and this signal fired off or this setup fired off um 
Yeah, about uh, late in the day yesterday. So that means that we'd probably be looking again on average, you know, maybe around the end of the day on uh, on Friday, you know, and there's gonna be some variance in there, of course, as well. But anywhere around there is, you know, is, is close enough within this case. Anyways, now that we've gotten through that, I do want to go back into my more regular charts over here and follow up on this. So yesterday we were looking at, hey, giving away my damn cards over here <laughs> bad anyways uh anyways in this case yes yesterday we were looking at a potential um head and shoulders right here now head and shoulders do have i believe somewhere around like a 64 to 66 percent chance to actually work out in this case that would be to the downside now what would actually confirm this as a head and shoulders would be of course a closure below the, below the neckline and where's our neckline well that's your 16 650 ish region um uh, on cme there so as long as no closures below there still not activated in that direction However, if you were to see, if you were to see a breakdown below that level, there is a measured move to be made. And by the way, this is the volume, um, you know, the 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 volume signature right here is actually perfect for for that. But uh, but in this case, yes, we'd have a measured move. Hey, guess where? 16,000 bucks actually pretty much right on the dot. Um, so basically, you know, somewhere around 16,000 bucks, maybe around those last prior uh, major lows, like in the mid to upper 15s is probably where I'd be looking for if that were to happen. But for right now, based off of the setup that we saw over here you know i do think that statistically speaking it's just more likely to be looking for a bounce to the upside after grinding out sideways right here you know realistically if you are going to see this breakdown you kind of want to see a breakdown like very very soon and when i say very soon i mean i preferably in the last 24 hours maybe at most in the next uh, in the next 24 hours that we have but the more that bitcoin kind of grinds it out sideways here the more and more likely it is to put in a nice trap move and uh, and pop back up above 17,000 bucks anyways just as you can have a breakdown from a head and shoulders you can also see the in, uh, sorry you can also see the uh, the head and shoulders um uh, failure move, which is just as powerful in my experience, if, especially with um, especially with Bitcoin and cryptos. For whatever reason, it seems that we just we've seen a lot of those in the past. Anyways, if we were to do that, um, we can also see the measure move in this case, and that would put Bitcoin basically at around 17,006 to 17,700. That's rather interesting because that would be in alignment with the ups, uh, sorry, with the more aggressive of the statistics that we looked at over here, as far as uh, uh, as far as far average percent gainer goes and the first standard deviation on the win side, which is right here. This would be the law side, by the way, in case you're wondering. So yes, it can lose and it can lose fucking big as well. Um, no doubt about that. Of course, we should actually even j just go uh, measure that out. What, what would be 4% from this region? Oh, what do you know? It's directly in fucking alignment with that head and shoulders target. That's rather interesting. Uh, so yeah, to the upside, obviously that's going to be in alignment with the upper end of the first innovation right there as well. And also with uh, within bounds of the 0.5 fib right there. And also kind of grinding up against the bottom side of this blue box territory that we've had in here for quite some time now. So you know, uh, I do think that that's more likely statistically speaking, but doesn't mean that it's an absolute certainty, of course. Anyways, as we move onwards and forwards from this, I should also denote that the full hour volatility on the uh, as given by the BBWP indicator is still contracting here. So ultimately, again, I do think that this is a potential trap setup. Oh, what's going on with my damn camera? God damn it, man. Ah, it's always something. It's always something. Well, fuck it. You can go fuck yourself, camera. Anyways, um, anyways, what else? Yeah, there is also potential hidden bullish divergence building as uh, four-hour RSI makes lower lows, and price action is still on higher lows for right now, but uh, but kind of teetering and tottering around those regions. But if we go over here and check out stochastic momentum again, we can see that um, you know, despite despite everything kind of pointing down over the past few days here, which was giving us a downside bias, which you know we. We've gotten like we've gotten in the short term time frames uh, the grind up against the bottom side of that 16650 to 16700 region. Uh, Bitcoin has still failed to actually break. So as we move as we move from here, uh, I do want to make a note first of the daily. Obviously, the daily actually will turn down today with any sort of a closure on CME below sixteen thousand eight hundred. You know that'd be a little bit concerning, concerning obviously with uh, with with very low volatility on the daily as well. But for right now, if we go to the twelve hour time frame, again downside pivot as long as Bitcoin's below seventeen one hundred, uh, kind of the same numbers yesterday actually. Six hour time frame is downside pivoted basically at the same number seventeen uh, one hundred as well. We do see a nice regression kind of forming right here, which 
which it will be hitting on the next uh, on the next open. And then the four hour time frame is actually going to be popping up, assuming that Bitcoin closed above sixteen seven. So now this is the first time that we actually see the very very low term time frame starting to you know show some signs of a uh, potential upside momentum. And then the hourly is probably going to be up as well. Indeed, it is sixteen seven hundred going to be the magical number. So what does that mean in the short term? Probably more side probably more sideways, honestly. Um, but you can see that uh, barring the daily. Uh, most other things are starting to be pivoted around 17,000 bucks, meaning that a Bitcoin could pop, pop back above about 17 or 17,100 more accurately. That would be a damn good indication that you're going to see another, uh, I don't know, 400, 500 buck move to the upside somewhere around 17.6 to 17.7, I'd say. Um, and then we'll come back to it after that. Again, that is still very much in alignment with, um, what was it? Uh, yes, the five-day chart. The five-day chart, obviously not closing tonight, but the five-day pivot has moved significantly down. So so what do I mean by that? Should we even get into this right now? Probably not so much. I won't go through the full explanation of this, but we had a volatility versus stochastic momentum setup over here. This one, I would say it worked out okay, but not but not great. So, so, certainly not um, uh, in alignment with the past ones. Uh, but in this case, the last closure has made the downside pivot actually below price action, uh, 16,400 right now. So that is to say that if Bitcoin can essentially remain above 16,400 by Sunday closure, you're going to naturally see this turn up. It's also going to, I mean, it's also going to be counted as kind of a trend line regression uh, test over here. And at that point, you know, again, we'd, uh, I'd say that the downside move has uh, played out. You know, you might get one more test down around the current, um, you know, around the current lows, but ultimately I'd still be saying, saying what I've been saying for a while now. I do believe that Bitcoin's a lot more likely to bounce above 18,000 bucks first before closing on new lows. Closing on new lows, not the same thing as retesting current lows, by the way. So if Bitcoin does lose, again, that 16.7 or 16.650-ish region, then probably going to be seeing you know, that first. But I'd still be looking at that as a damn good bounce region. Again, these are extremely boring times. So ultimately, if you're watching during these times, um, you know, I do want to say one, thanks thanks for sticking around because I need some fucking friends during these uh, very lonely and boring times. But more importantly, else is looking at me like I'm a crazy person. Yes, I, I, I need friends, okay? I need human touch. No, you're my girlfriend. You're not like my friend friend. Like what the fuck? Oh, well, let's let's just go exchange presents together or something. I don't, I don't even know. Um, what do friends do? I don't even know. <laughs> um, but uh, but uh, yes, where was I? I forgot where I was, so it doesn't really matter anymore. Anyways, my point is, is that as I come back to it, is that during these times that are extremely fucking boring, this actually is where a lot of the most important stuff does happen for the long term. But you know, being that it is uh, rather boring, most people miss out on it. So kudos to you for sticking around because I know that it's certainly not easy during these times, but at the end of the day, you know, th this, th this truly is where a lot of opportunities are long-term had. Anyways, other than that, I think it's a good time for me to be signing off. I want to be wishing you the best, best as always. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully soon.